Hey there YouTube, this is SGM4306 back with another video. I actually kind of recently, I, I don't know, it wasn't super recent, but like within the past few months, I saw a Big Clive video on one of these flame light lamps, and I was really interested in them, and I'm actually making a project that's kind of semi-related to this, so I thought I, I would get one just as reference. I may or may not use this, I probably won't use this in, in that project specifically, because I wanted to actually make something in that case. But we'll see. I wanted to actually tear one of these down. You can see it's a flame light lamp. So it basically has a matrix of LEDs and it, it, it's supposed to flicker to simulate flame. And so here, yeah, I don't know how much I trust all this kind of stuff about ratings and whatnot. Anyway, it, it's going to be relatively low power, not very bright. And it's more for the effect. Apparently it comes in different colors. I got the orange one, and this was, it was a couple, I think it was like six or seven bucks, so not super expensive either, and I thought it'd just be fun to play around with, yeah, and it's a Ranpo branded one, never heard of that brand, but yeah, it uses a standard like light bulb socket, so I have a, a lamp to the side here, so let's actually plug this in, and before we actually take it apart to bits, uh, see what the effect looks like on this model. Okay, so here we are at said lamp. Let's just flick it on. And it looks flickerier on camera, oddly enough. And it looks more uniform. But when I actually see with my eyes, I can see the individual LEDs if I were to actually look straight at the plastic. Uh, looking through like the frosted area, the effect actually looks a little better in real life. Not sure how it's coming across on camera. But yeah, it's it's okay. Yeah, I mean, it's not bad. It, I think it definitely could use more diffusion because it, it's washing out my, my CCD on my camera sensor. So it actually looks better on camera when I look directly at the plastic. Uh, but in real life, I can see all the little dots and they're not all connected. It doesn't look quite like this. This, when I'm actually looking at the screen on my camera, it looks fantastic. That actually does look like a pretty good fire effect. But in real life, it's it's a bit underwhelming. So I think I am definitely going to add more uh, diffusive material if there's room inside, uh, just to make it more even, if I can get it to look like... And also another thing is, it looks brighter on camera on the screen than in real life as well. So it's it's kind of a little bit dim in real life. But yeah, anyway, uh, it has other modes too, so we'll just switch this off. And when you switch it on to the next mode, it switches, and all the LEDs are on now. And I can distinctly see each and every LED. And this is actually brighter than the last mode. Well, obviously, because every LED is on. And then the last mode is a breathing mode. It does that kind of... Yeah, you might notice some horizontal bands going up and down. That's just because of the frame rate of the camera. I don't see that in real life. But yeah, it just like does a smooth fade and up and down. And then if I switch it again, it should do the fire mode. Yeah, so that's about it. That's what I figured. Um, so I guess nothing left to do but to pop this open. Okay, so here's the bulb. The base feels a little warm. But everything else is still cool to the touch. Let's see, does this unscrew or... Oh, it just pops out. <laughs> it's just held in with the... Uh, there's a little lip there and a little bit of friction, I guess. Okay. Uh, here are the LEDs, which are also still cool. Uh, interestingly enough, I actually have one of these LEDs right here. Uh, it uses the same kind of LEDs as uh, the LED bulbs that I have in there. They're like 60 watt equivalent bulbs. And it looks like maybe the phosphor is a slightly different shade, or maybe this this one I pulled from a dead bulb. Uh, the LED itself still works, but it was cooked pretty well, so maybe that changed the the color a little bit. Yeah, you can see it's the same exact package, though, and wow, that just came out. <laughs> and yeah, exactly what uh, Big Clive was saying. Um, it's 5 volts. Yeah, so this is a DC-DC converter, just in a little bit of heat shrink, of course, as you would, I guess. So that's actually really interesting. So yeah, it's a 5-volt regulator board. Oops, sorry about that. 5-volt regulation. And this is a microcontroller. You see lots of uh, current-limiting 
resistors. I guess this is just driven just like a matrix. And I can kind of see the pattern. There is a pattern. And I think Clive actually traced it out. And they end up being like some kind of crisscross pattern, the way it's matrixed. And because obviously there are many, many more LEDs than there are pins that solder down here. So it has to be doing some kind of matrix. And I believe some of the LEDs are also kind of in parallel across the board. Because if this LED is lit up, you're not going to be able to see this one lit up from this side. So why bother driving both of them independently? So there, there's like some kind of matrixing where they have LED pairs like across the ways from each other all around the circle. So it's basically like mirrored. Anyway, um, let's actually just desolder this, I guess. I should be able to solder just a USB cord onto here and power this off of like a power bank or something. Uh, but yeah, very interesting construction with, this is actually the flex PCB and it's just wrapped around on itself and soldered at several points there. And then it's right angle soldered. It has little tabs, I guess, that poke out from the bottom and they're poked through the board and it's just bam, 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 solder all around the ring. It's actually rather interesting. So yeah, this chip runs the show and if you can see inside there. There is a, a footprint for what appears to be like a regulator package, U2. That's not used. There is a diode and a bunch of transistors. So this chip is driving transistors to drive like the rows and columns of this matrix, uh, which makes sense. I mean, yeah, and that's kind of it, I guess. <laughs> really not much to this. So let me uh, just desolder this and wire this up to like a USB cord. Okay, so I have my officially branded USB power bank. And yeah, I just soldered the wires exactly as the other one was soldered. Let's see if this works. Now obviously this is low voltage, so. But yeah, you can see. Let me shut off the lights actually. There you go. Yeah, it looks significant. Well, like, it looks half as bright in real life compared to on camera. But yeah, you could see it's like driving like a diagonal kind of pattern. And it does the thing where like a flame does where it releases like a little bit of flame as it rises sometimes. Yeah. And with the cap on... I mean, if you look, look at the actual, like, shadow, that's actually pretty realistic. If you go a little while away and you're to look at my hand, the way that it, it, uh, s seemingly random. It's not random. This is a cyclic pattern. So this is hard-coded. It's not, not really doing anything random, probably. And it's just a cycle that just repeats over and over again. But if you make the the pattern long enough, the average human isn't going to actually notice anything. But yeah, I think maybe a little bit more diffusive material and it, it would look even better like this. If I just put this on top and look through the, the opaque plastic, this looks really nice, actually. Maybe a little bit too, I don't know, I don't really have anything that's opaque. <laughs> I might play around with uh, different kind of materials that are a little bit translucent, but, but yeah, anyway, that was just sort of a random video. I saw uh, Clive make a video on this and I was actually really interested in picking one up myself. Uh, now I alluded to a project that I'm actually working on now that is not complete. Uh, I've done all the, the design work. Well, I've done most of the like software design work. Uh, it's just I need to actually implement the hardware, but it's basically going to be a lamp. And that's a whole thing that got me into looking at like artificial fire candle circuits and things like that. And there are, there are a number of ones that just use like single LEDs or like a handful of LEDs. And they look okay if you diffuse them enough, but I was actually really interested to see using like a matrix uh, what you could, what kind of effect you could accomplish. Now, I am interested to see if I grab my uh, current 
the like a current meter, see how much current this draws while it's operating. Now one interesting thing you might have noticed is when I wire it up to the USB cord like this, when I turn it... Oh, okay, I see, yeah. So the voltage drops a little bit when you shut it off. If you turn it on and off really quick, then you can transfer, go through the actual modes. But it always seems to start up in the fire mode. You can see here, it's solidly lit. Now this is a fade mode. Now we're back to fire. So yeah, uh, we'll measure the, the current for each of the modes, and I guess that'll be it for this video. So here we go, fire. And this is drawing. It's jumping around anywhere from like 40 to peak, I'm seeing about 90. So about 40 to 90 milliamps. On average, it's about 50, it's looking like. If I toggle this, solidly lit is just under 200 milliamps. And fading will obviously ramp up and down. Yeah, it seems to be like the peak power is about 200 milliamps, just over 190. Yeah, but in this fire mode, it draws kind of, well, you know, significantly under 100 milliamps, so that's not too bad, but then again, it's not like super bright either, but I guess if, if you're making like a little electronic candle or lantern, you really don't need it to be that bright anyway, so I think this is uh, definitely sufficient. And, okay, I promise this will be the last thing. I just want to see what the supply looks like. Now, I did have this plugged in, and there is a DC link cap there, so I'm going to try not to electrocute myself. It's been a minute or two, so it should be fine. Should be fine. She'll be fine. Yeah, it really literally is heat shrink. <laughs> yep. That's all they uh, coated that in. Okay, there. Yeah, so we have a 400 volt 6.8 mic uh, DC link cap there. There's a bridge rectifier right underneath it. Those leads are actually <laughs> kind of awfully long. I'm not sure how I feel about that. Let me... There we go. Get the focus on there. Yeah, and the soldering looks pretty bad on the uh, neutral. The live is probably okay, but they definitely should have trimmed that. Then there's like a, a SOIC 8 chip, which is undoubtedly the regulator, and that's under the left side right near the top of that cap underneath it and then we have a a crookedly soldered uh transformer here <laughs> it's just a little bit cocked up it's not sitting flat on the board okay and we have traces yeah don't know how i feel about that traces like sneaking in between the uh the primary side Looks like there's, well, there's four pins on the one side and then two on the other. And the two here are probably the secondary. And, um, yeah, basically, like, not really much clearance, if at all. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I probably won't actually, I'll probably toss this. I, might, I, I don't even think there's anything really worth saving. These caps are probably not so good quality. I don't really even see a brand, BH brand, whatever that is. And yeah, we have our diode on the secondary, a loading capacitor, or a loading resistor of 330 ohms, and one solder flipped on the back. I guess um, in, they put them in parallel to get a lower value. They didn't have a lower one. So it's probably 150 ohms loading the output. There's an unpopulated uh, component there. Oh, sorry about that. Yeah, uh, there's really not much going here. And it looks like maybe there's some, yeah, there's some components underneath the transformer. Ah, uh, yeah, this is kind of a bit of a safety hazard. I'm not, not really trusting this supply. So, yeah, anyway, if you wanted uh, just a low-voltage fire look-alike thing that actually does a pretty decent job, uh, you could do worse for, like, five or six bucks. I think it was about six bucks, and including shipping, maybe, something like that, six or seven, including shipping. So not not super expensive for what you get. You get you get a decent amount of LEDs too, if you wanted to uh, scavenge them or whatever. And unfortunately, they did wipe the uh, 
the model number off the controller here and this is undoubtedly like a small 8-bit microcontroller but can't read that so yeah but anyway still kind of useful um as i'm building my um my, lan my lantern project i actually might stick this in there just to see what the effect looks like and if it's good then i might go with this otherwise i actually already have a circuit plan for it uh, that i intend to implement um using like my own microcontroller and whatnot Anyway, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this random video, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.